we get to my most despised topic out of all the different IB standard level biology topics. And it's this one, which is about classification. There's a whole bunch of memorizing that you have to do. And, uh, you, you know, for me, I just didn't do it, but I think I regretted that later, but that's okay. So let's go through this first question. To which group do sponges belong? So the sponges, we're talking about um, a, uh, an organism and you need to essentially know by definition which one it's from. A few different tips that I can kind of give you um, is that every, every time you see phyta, you just have to think of plants. So we're talking about a plant here. We're not even talking about um, a, an animal. So straight away we know it's not that one. Apart from the rest, we've got cnidaria, porifera, and mollusca. And I know that the correct answer is porifera. And the reason why I know is like, it's kind of like a cheap way of doing it. But porifera, it has kind of the word pore in it. So pore, they're just like those little holes that are in sponges. So, you know, if you had like a sponge here, like a green sponge, and you had little holes in it, then those are the pores in it. That's, what, that's how I kind of remember it, there's pores and periphery. So that's what sponges are. How about these other ones? So, cnidaria. So what I kind of think about really stupid as well is like the C kind of there, it kind of looks like if the C initially looks like that, and you can kind of turn it upside down, and it kind of looks like there, this, and then kind of think of little tentacles coming off from there. So it's that's what jellyfish are part of. And the last one is mollusks, which I actually know because I kind of like mollusks. So mollusks are things with one foot, um, so that includes snails. Uh, yeah, so that includes snails and um, other things as well. So yeah, once again, just definitions you need to know. There's a, a few cheap little tips that you can look into there if you wanted to. Question two, a poodle and a chihuahua are both dogs and classified as Canis familiaris. What conclusion can be made? So they're of the same species. Remember that the thing with a capital C is a is the genus, while the second one, which is not in a capital letter, is its species. So the species is technically familiaris, but the genus is um, Canis as well. So they belong to the same genus, but not the same species. Incorrect. They are the same species, but not the same genus. That's very stupid. Because if something's in the same species, it must be in the same genus. They're different species, but can interbreed. That's incorrect. Because if um, if they were different species, which they're not, they couldn't interbreed. Finally, D, they belong to the same genus and, the, and are the same species. Very easy. Question three, which phylum does a plant below belong to? And we've got the four different ones that we need to know. A, B, C, and F. So angiosperma phyta, bryophyta, Conifera phyta and Philocena phyta. And once again, a lot of just memorization you have to do here. So with the first one that you probably should know about is Bryophyta. And think of these guys as the Stone Age guys. So these guys are mosses. So think of these as mosses. So um, you know you might have a rock here with uh, with moss growing on the top, and that is what a bryophyte is. And um, so they're very simple things. And this thing on the side is obviously not a moss, so it's not B. How about uh, let's look at A and C. So C conifera phyta. So every time you think of conifera phyta, think of the coney. So think of the cone. So you remember those pine cones that you used to have? Oh, I'm horrible at drawing pine cones. That looks more like an ice cream, so let's not even pretend to draw one. Um, but anyway, so that's a conifer or a cone tree, and they grow up to be very tall, and they do reproduce via um, cone seeds as well. But this is obviously not a cone tree either. Um, a, angiosperma phyta. Um, I don't know, the only thing that, it's got the word sperm in it, which makes it sound funny, but um, I guess the thing about angiosperma phyta is that they're like your more average tree. So every time when you're a kid and you used to draw like a tree like this, that's what an angiosperma phyta is. It's a more standard looking tree with the roots that reproduce via pollen. They can grow up to 100 meters tall, etc. Finally, the last one, which is the correct answer, is D, which is Philocena phyta. And the way that I remember this is F, or for Philocena phyta, actually is. Um, also starts for fern as well. So every time you think of a fern or this kind of organism, then you think of Philocena phyta. So there are a few little tricks that you can do so that I kind of remember these really bizarre looking names. Apart from that, not really much else. Final question, which fe what features distinguish platy helminths from Annelida? Um, once again, just a lot of a, um, 
a lot of uh, memorization that you have to do. But a few little tips that I can give you as well. So platy, I'm not sure if the Australian members, which I'm from as well, will probably know about the platypus, which is like duck build. So this, is, this actually means flat. So platy helmet is actually a flat worm. Okay, so they're non-segmented, whereas an annelida um, is a segmented one. And if you know that, then straight away you can move on to, you know what to, to look for. So annelida, segmented body, whereas flatworm is non-segmented. So straight away you know that B is the correct answer. But if you didn't know what they were from, then you just have to have a random guess. The symmetry is always a unique point that I can never remember. But um, fortunately, uh, there's a couple of different ways to remember uh, at least platy helmets. Platy means flat, so flat worm, and the leader is the opposite. So you kind of think of like earthworms, so earthworm gym, and you've got your segments on the side as well. Okay? Good. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out. Just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions, as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a 7 in high-level IB biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks.